Hello, everyone out there watching this video. My name is Hannah Kamea Kemble, and I uh, am with the Moving Child Films, eBooks and Music. And I'm a counselor, a dance movement therapist, and a certified movement analyst living in British Columbia, Canada. And we welcome you today. Um, I have the pleasure of interviewing a colleague and teacher of mine, Sonia Story, who's with us from uh, Wash the state of Washington in the United States today. And Sonia is going to be um, teaching us about rhythmic movements and about um, sensory integration and reflex integration uh, through her work over many decades working with uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people and uh, children and families. So super happy to welcome you, Sonia. Um, Sonia you. is of Move, Play, Thrive is the name of her company. And um, she is a world renowned teacher and a mother, a um, body worker and a rhythmic movement and sensory therapist, as well as a current graduate student, as I've just learned from you, Sonia, um, <laughs> in movement science. And so you're interested in doing more research in the movement science area, which is gonna be great. So I just wanna welcome you. Um, is there anything else that I did not mention that you'd like to just say about yourself or your work at this time? Well, I'm really happy to be here and just always feel very grateful to be able to share this. So thanks for the opportunity and thanks to all the listeners who are here. Thank you. So I have some questions in mind for us to talk about today. And um, I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about your work, kind of in a nutshell, what you're up to, and what is your training or your background? How did you come into this field? Yes, so I originally started because I wanted to be a better mom. I was um, a young mom of two beautiful daughters, one who was very hypersensitive and one who was very hyperactive. And we were attempting to homeschool and they would trigger each other a lot. And then I would get triggered. And um, I, I, <laughs> I got to a point where one day I was yelling at them for yelling and I realized I was so off track and um, really needed to find something to help me. And I started, uh, I had an opportunity to take some courses in brain gym. And I, that's an educational uh, program that uses movement to help with learning. And I got so many benefits from that. And I started doing it with my children and they got benefits. We all benefited as a family, much more harmony. But in that process, I learned about these innate movements, some of which are rhythmic, some of which are uh, reflex oriented. There are a whole sequence of primitive and postural reflexes in development. And then some of which were, you know, the, the ones that are more common like developmental movements that ones are familiar with more um, rolling, sitting, crawling, hands and knees crawling. And, I had so much fun learning all this and I could see that there was a huge need for it. We got great results with our two children. And then I started working with other children and families and the feedback was phenomenal. I studied with Dr. Harold Blumberg, who is a psychiatrist and he and Moira Dempsey were my main teachers in rhythmic movement. And these again are innate rhythmic movements. Um, so they're the ones that babies do in the womb and in early infancy, same with the reflexes. And I was just astounded by what I was learning and how well it was working. And I ended up taking so many courses in the field of kind of the umbrella term is neurodevelopmental movement. And I took so many courses and got enough certifications that I was able to teach the courses. And at the same time, I had been um, doing body work over a number of years just to help myself from injuries. And so I combined what I learned from the body work modalities 
And I wasn't regularly practicing that just on myself and with my husband. Um, but I did go to trainings and I learned quite a bit. And so I combined that with what I saw the children were teaching me and all the different courses. I took over 50 courses in reflex integration and eight movements, developmental rhythmic movements. And I loved every minute of it. And I just kept applying it. And then I synthesized the best of the best tools that I thought were gonna be the most useful. And I developed my own curriculum and I've been teaching that for quite a number of years. I think it's since 2007 or eight when I started. And um, it's just been a lovely journey um, of discovery and many blessings. I muted myself there and back. Um, I'm awestruck just by your dedication over all this time and uh, also mm. how many different teachers you've had and the, the integration of the work that you've been doing over these decades. Well, yeah. thanks. You know, early on, I had a mother write me a letter about her 10 year old boy. I actually, um, he wasn't a client specifically. Um, I was asked by his tutor to come and teach movements to a group in their area. And the mother could not attend the training because she was working that weekend, but the tutor attended. And then she taught the mother and they both did these movements with this little boy. He had had um, pretty severe ADHD. He was below grade level in all of his courses and about two years below, one to two years below. And he was having trouble socially making friends. He was having trouble physically. He would get very tired and they had tried everything. They had gone to the whole route of medication on and off medication. They had done um, you know, psychological work and evaluations and things like that. They've done nutritional work. And um, his mom said that when they started doing these movements, she said after four months, um, he was hopping on his bike and just riding for miles without being prompted. He was socially much more engaged with his friends. And he start, they tested his schoolwork and he was at uh, grade level in every course except for one and he was only a couple points off. And so I'm reading this letter, this was back in 2008 and it was, um, it was so amazing to me how powerful the movements were. And this wasn't even a client, this was someone who I did get to meet him. It was so wonderful. I got to do one session with him in the course. He was like a, a child there for the purpose of demonstration for the course and just a beautiful soul. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And he started doing these movements with his mom. And in four months, he came out of that ADHD. And I thought, someone has to get this out to parents. And um, and then it kind of dawned on me that nobody was doing this. And I had talked to hundreds of OTs because they had been in some of the same courses I had been in and some of the trainings that I was starting to teach. And they all said the same thing. We learn what these primitive reflexes are. We learn how to test for them, but we don't learn how, what to do with them. And so they have to initiate special training once they graduate to learn about it. So then it turned out that even though I thought I was gonna be teaching parents, I had so many occupational therapists, physical therapists, vision therapists, um, mental health therapists, um, pain relief specialists, yoga therapists, myofunctional therapists, and they all came back and said, these tools are amazing. They're some of the most powerful tools I've ever used for whatever their specialty was. And it, it just became such a phenomenal learning uh, for me. And I do still teach parents. I love to teach parents and educators mm -hmm. and uh, anyone who wants to learn. Um, but I, I have come to learn myself that 
I think because these movements are innate, that's the reason they're so powerful. In other words, our, our in, innate intelligence recognizes these movements and knows what to do with them. And it's like superfood for the brain and the body and the sensory system. So that's why I realized this must be why they're working so well. Um, and then Dr. Blomberg, of course, taught us a lot of things about how the brain is set up to work and why, more specifically, why they're, they're working. I was just going to ask you about that. Um, and we will get a chance a little bit later on to talk about your Brain and Sensory Foundations course. I think people should know about that as well. Um, so essentially, what are the reflexes? Um, how do they work in the body-mind connection? Anything you want to say about this brain, this body, um, reflexive movement? What's reflex integration? There's a few questions for you. Sure. Well, would it be okay if I share my slides? Because I, I might. Absolutely. Sometimes I get so excited with all the questions that I'm. <laughs> I think it's easier if I'm a little more linear. So I'll have my slides guide Great. me. Please do. Um, otherwise, um, I might miss something. So yeah, let me I'll do share. the screen share. Here we go. All right. And I think I'm in the middle here, but I will go, let's start here. So I'm sharing and I think I need to do this, right? So great. Okay, so what I like to show this visual in particular because you can see very clearly the difference in the babies on the top versus the bottom. And when I ask an audience to look at these and I say, okay, which babies have more alignment and core strength? Everyone knows right away, it's the babies on the top. And then if we think further, what's actually happening? So if we're slouched, then we don't have as much room for our internal organs to grow. If we're slouched, we're not being able to take a full belly breath. And so we're getting less oxygen. And if we're slouched like that, we don't have our core upright strength. We have much less ability to physically explore our environment, which is the thing that's going to get us all the rich learning that we're supposed to have in infancy. So, and the other point of, of these two pictures is to show that you know, all healthy babies will naturally do these movements as long as they have room to move, they're not stressed and they're not hindered. And um, that they will do these movements and they will grow and develop beautifully. Um, the problem is, is there are now so many hindrances in babies for their development. And um, that's the sad part of it because there are so many babies now who look like the bottom row where they really don't have their core strength and ability to function well from the from very early on. So then that doesn't go away. You know, all of what, what you see in the top row, those babies are well developed and ready to explore their environment. So they are going to be able to develop good posture, core strength, balance, muscle development sensory development, focus, the ability to focus is hugely reliant on these movements that set up our posture and core strength. Um, and Dr. Blomberg always used the term brain maturity to describe this, but it's not only brain maturity, it's brain, body, and sensory maturity. And uh, we have here on this list the ability to be calm, and that relates to Kind of getting more specific into when we develop brain and body maturity through these movements, we then have the ability to be still and control our impulses and learn and focus. So hopefully that's clear. Let me just go to the next slide. So the, the point of this slide is that when you are slouched like that as an infant, it doesn't go away unless you do something about it. So sometimes parents will be hearing this kind of presentation and they'll go back and look at the baby pictures 
if their child is struggling and they'll see, oh yeah, they were slouched. They didn't have that upright core strength. And that's one way uh, to see if there's a need. Um, but usually you already know. Here, here's another example where the healthy baby looks like the one on the left and the compromised baby, it's very clear that um, the core strength and alignment is not there. And this is highly significant. Um, it really sets the baby back in their development. And they end up with things possibly, not always, but possibly like ADHD or autism. So you asked me about what the reflexes are and they are an automatic response to a stimulus and they're innate. In other words, uh, our brain and our bodies already know these movements. Here's one that just about everyone knows when you put your finger in a baby's hand, they will grasp. And um, that is to get our hands ready and active. And it, it gets our brain developed so that our um, hands function well. Well, of course there's reflexes for all of our body parts and all of our ways that we move. And um, they're incredibly important because they not only set up our brain and body maturity, but also our sensory maturity. And the problem is that they don't get to go through their whole life cycle. So what they're supposed to do is repeat over and over in infancy, and then gradually they repeat less and less. And now when they're mature, as long as everything's going well in development, so now you can press on a baby's hand and they have a choice whether or not to do with that. They could just look at it, but they don't have the obligation to keep doing that. Because if they do have that obligation, meaning that the reflex never did its proper life cycle and became dormant, if they're stuck here, then they cannot get to this. Does that make sense? This is the basis actually for counting, right? All these different, you know, more uh, differentiated movements are showing that there's a more mature nervous system in place. The other thing that happens, and this is not only for the hand, but it's for every part of the brain. If that reflex stays there, it's called a retained reflex, but if it stays there when it should be dormant and mature, it interferes with muscle strength. So we see children all the time with weak grasp and weak muscles and low muscle tone or too much muscle tone. And that's another clue that these reflexes didn't really get to fully do their jobs and mature. So um, there is one particular reflex that is so incredibly important. They're all important for brain maturity and body and sensory. But this one in particular, I wanted to show this picture because this is the one where when babies startle. So, if this does not go through its life cycle, do its jobs, and then become dormant, these are the possible things that could be left in the system. So to, to simplify it, um, the baby, if the baby doesn't grow out of this reflex and have it become dormant, then they can be left in a state of fight or flight, which is really sad because then they're always on edge they're not learning well, um, their sensory system doesn't get mature and calm, it stays agitated. And this is very challenging by the time you are, um, it should ideally be dormant at around two to four months of age, um, but oftentimes it's left in the system. That was actually my, one of my issues. I had um, an unintegrated moral reflex and um, my life changed hugely when I was able to integrate it. Um, I had mild sensory issues, but those got way better. Um, I um, had much less of a need to control because I wasn't in constant anxiety and overwhelm. And um, my, my world opened up, my visual perception opened up, 
I was spontaneously joyful for the first time in my life. I mean, I've always been, no, I always knew it was important to be positive and I was always working at it. <laughs> but in this way, uh, I became uh, mature in my nervous system and able to be in my body and enjoy it in a calm way that was uh, not constantly stressful. And I, you asked about the body-mind connection. So I thought, well, I better share this slide <laughs> because we, you know, our goal is to help children be comfortable in their bodies, to experience their bodies as something wonderful, to enjoy movement, to enjoy touch, to enjoy sensory input, and to be able to respond in ways that are meaningful to them so that they can work with their meaningful goals. Um, because, you know, we all need meaningful work, even young children. And obviously for, for really young children, their meaningful work is play. But even play has to be um, supported by this foundation. Uh, otherwise, even playing is challenging. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll pause there. Body in available. You, wanna... <laughs> you need your body available to play with. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming that when you integrated your moral reflex, that was as an adult, so that adults as well as children can be supported with this. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's the most wonderful thing mm -hmm. is that these movements are supportive at any age from infancy to elder. And I started in um, my 40s and it's been a lovely journey. I am, I am so grateful that I have these tools. It's been yeah. so uh life-changing mm -hmm. i don't know how you've been it's i, I don't even have the words <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. i and you know it was so strange for me because i always judged myself for my the way that i was functioning in the world because i didn't realize what was it, i didn't realize that my nervous system needed help and I didn't know why I was oftentimes negative and miserable and why I was controlling in my relationships. I had no idea. I didn't even realize that I had constant low grade anxiety until I got out of it. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like, wow, this is what life is supposed to be like. This is what it's supposed to be like. Um, this is how human beings are meant to function. And um, I, I am forever grateful. <laughs> yes, and then you get to pass it on. Um, so yes. do you have more slides you wanna share, Sonia? Or is there- Sure, other... yeah, okay. I have some fascinating before and after slides, but let me start talking yeah. about these um, rhythmic movements. I'll come back to this little guy. Well, I better, I better share it here because he, um, if I go on, I might forget to come back. And sure. this little boy uh, was very challenged with sensory input. Mm -hmm. He was really afraid of getting his hair cut at the barber, you know, with the buzz, the electric buzz cutter, and, and had a really hard time with vacuum cleaners and the, the um, air dryers in public restrooms. And so after about a month of these innate rhythmic movements, which we'll talk about, um, they combine that with a couple of the reflexes, fear paralysis and moral, and then he could vacuum. But the other thing is that he got better at dressing himself. And very importantly, at the beginning when they started, he could not be in a group of children without huge disruption. So in within 30 seconds, he was uh, throwing things and crawling over the other children, but they, the movements were able to help him develop enough to where he could be in a group situation at school for 30 to 40 minutes and be participating meaningfully. So that was um, phenomenal, very life-changing for that little boy. And let's go on to the rhythmic movements here. So these are also spontaneous innate movements that all babies do as long as they're healthy. And they're very calming. And 
we know this intuitively because one of the first rhythmic movements is in the womb and that's sucking. Babies will suck their thumbs in the womb and they provide calm and organization and a lot of good stimulation to the brain. And they're also very important. They work hand in hand in development with reflexes. Um, and so they support reflex integration and sensory integration. And um, they're super, super important. The other thing, because I know you're interested in working with ones with trauma, Hannah, is that they're so good for helping with trauma because they're so calming and they regulate the brainstem. And yes. this is something that is now known that um, in order to help ones with trauma, and again, this is for any age, um, regulating the brainstem with rhythm is really, really important as a first step. So, okay. So this is the slide we were talking about earlier. If a child or an adult is not able to produce a smooth rhythmic movement, then they are at risk for speech and language disorders, developmental coordination disorders, ADHD symptoms, and dyslexia. So that is a really good piece of research because intuitively we can say, well, if we help a child develop a good smooth steady beat and rhythm from within their body, does it help with these things? And we have seen that, yes, it does. Uh, the other thing about children in the body-mind uh, body connection, of course, body-mind connection can mean many things to many individuals, but as far as children being able to go after goals that are meaningful for them, um, it's really important for them to be able to embody in a way that's comfortable and their muscles are working and they're able to do with their bodies what they want. But I want to see, I want you guys to see how it worked out for this little boy. He's, um, it's going to show before and after again, and he is in an OT session in, in this. Oh, whoops, I missed it. Sorry. Here we go. Okay, your hands around here. You can get up, you can lift your legs up like this too. You can keep yourself up. Okay, go. Fly like Superman. I'm flying over in Arizona. You're all the way to California. Go to the ocean. Okay, rest. Superman. Get up there. So obviously we can see here much better reading scores, like huge jump in his ability to read. All right, so let me show you the spirals. This is actually a soul who was 16 when these were drawn and they were within a couple months of each other. And this was given to me by his physiotherapist. And uh, he had poor eye fixation and tracking and uh, tremor in his handwriting. And then um, much better, you can see what he's able to do after just a couple months of movement. So this is one of the first ones that I like to teach because it's super easy to learn and it's very relaxing and calming. Um, you can do that or you can do this on your own or you can help someone else to do it. And you place your one hand on the shoulder, one hand on the hip, and then the individual is lying on the side. And then you just give really gentle, tiny back and forth rocking motions, just like you would rock a baby to sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, it's fantastic. We just usually do a small range of motion because so many children don't have, um, it, it might feel odd to them if, if they go way forward because they may feel like they're falling. So we start with just a small range of motion and we attempt 
to do the rhythm that they like the best. So if you're doing this by yourself, you'll be able to figure out your own rhythm. But if you're facilitating for someone, you wanna make sure that you ask them what they like. Do they want it harder, softer, faster, slower? And you get the, find the rhythm that they feel most relaxed and happy with. Mm -hmm. And that's a key part of this is that it's very honoring to the individual because everybody likes it the way they like it. And we don't impose a certain rhythm. We don't impose a certain um, protocol or anything. And then when they're ready to stop, we stop. And um, it's very easy to do and very effective. And it's super good to do just before you want to go to sleep because it can help with sleep. Um, that's one of the most common reports that we have from parents is that the movements help their children sleep. And adults use it too all the time for sleep which is really important. So just a little bit here is you wanna make sure that you've established a comfortable position for everyone. Um, usually with sideline, we'll, we'll want to have a pillow there for the head. And then we ask for feedback and establish the best rhythm for that individual. And it should be pleasant for everyone. And um, we teach in the course, like if you are facilitating to be in a positive, um, heart connection with the individual. And then for those who are non-speaking, we want to be aware of facial expression and changing breathing. And um, ideally, you'll see a, a relaxation response. And um, when we get the rhythmic movements going, they should be smooth, flowing, symmetric, and coordinated. And ideally, if you're doing it solo and by yourself without a facilitator, it should be easy to sustain the beat on your own and not have accessory body parts moving and ideally effortless, relaxing and enjoyable. And um, yeah, so that's a description of one that you can start with and it's super sweet and um, almost everybody loves this one. So you have shared about the process a little, you've shared about the reflexes and rhythmic movement. And if people want to learn more, as I understand, you have an upcoming brain and sensory foundations course that is available. And it's an online course that people do a bit of home study with as well as watch videos and engage with you in, um, in webinar learning as well or in a classroom setting. Yeah. Um, when does that start? When is that upcoming? And I will just mention that we, as Moving Child, are going to share the links for folks to be able to sign up for that course if they're interested. Um, when does that begin? So we are currently, right now, in an open enrollment period. Okay. So and and then as soon as you enroll, you get access to the course, and it is very in depth and comprehensive. We go through innate rhythmic movements, 11 innate infant reflexes. That's in the first level. We have a second level course also. And then we also do playful games to integrate reflexes. And then we also have more targeted specific activities for individuals who can follow directions. Um, and those also are very, um, effective for integrating the reflexes. And then we have special tools that enhance the work with the reflexes. So um, it is a wonderful, unique, and um, super effective set of combination of tools. Yes. And uh, so yeah. you asked me about time. So on, um, so ongoing it, intake throughout the year, different courses starting at different times. Yeah, yeah. so we, yeah, so it's um, instant access, but then we do have scheduled live Q and A's. Right. But the end date to enroll is April 30th of okay. 2022. Okay, great. So that's our closing date, yeah. Thank you so much for giving us just a brief overview. Um, I know we, we so briefly touched on these reflexes and the power of rhythm in the Moving Child film. Your course goes into much more depth and I hope that many people will take advantage of your offerings and your teaching. 
and be able to learn more and share this with the world so we can see more children and adults healed and well developed. So yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too, Hannah. I just want to make one thing clear. So our open enrollment is through April 30th, but then you have time to complete the course. Okay, that's we right. do have a course end date because we have to run cohorts, but it's it's at least a minimum of nine months. And it's about 18 hours of coursework. Great. Yeah. So, and thanks for all that you're doing to promote movement for children. It's so important. I know we share that vision. Yes. That's yes. Cool. Well, thanks again. And we will maybe come back to another interview at another time because I know there's more to learn from you. So thank you again. And uh, we will share those links in our Facebook page and the website and the newsletter that you may be watching this video through folks. All right. Be well, everyone. Be well. Thank you so much. Bye.